All right, today doing a video on this uh, DNA uh, HDX50. This is kind of a rare amp because um, it, it was the um, later version of the uh, DNA Hornet little 2250 watt amp and um, this was the last version before um, to try to get around the FCC crackdown at the time and as you can see they called it this one a novice 15 meter CW transmitter and what they did was um, they took the uh, Hornet 22 you know 10 meter linear amplifier and here's a picture from a flyer of the uh, original uh, Hornet you know if you could see 50 watts and all that the particulars of the specs of it so when the FCC cracked down on people selling um, you know linear amplifiers that would you know be forward wide drive and operate on CB um, because of the crackdown the FCC um, the amp manufacturers started selling them and marketing them as different things like some of them you know what said they're receive amplifiers and don't switch this wire here and don't do that there to make it into a you know a power amplifier and DNA on a lot of them they said you know they changed them to transmitters you know 20 meter or 15 meter and called it a novice CW transmitter and with this one they added a um, uh, oscillator or pre-driver tube or I guess it would be called a driver tube in this one but anyway an oscillator tube and you know you see the one crystal socket on the front so you would plug in a uh, 15 minute crystal and it would you know be amplified by the oscillator tube and uh, you know then the regular power amplifier tubes and then it would do you know its thing on 15 meters as came from the factory um, but there was some um, factory literature that came out and I happen to have a printout of one um, this one here with the RDX 75 that was the uh, printout of the remake of the uh, Raider 100 and they called it the RDX 75 and it was the same principle like you know don't take out the uh, oscillator tube and you know a capacitor and rewire the um, the input to drive the um, tubes directly instead of the oscillator tube and then because you know it was set up for you know 15 or 20 meters you had to redo the tank coil by you know um, shortening the coil and here's the one on the um, HDX 50 or the um, Hornet here you know to print out of what to do to convert this into a um, 10 meter you know illegal uh, linear amplifier and basically you know you're um, taking out a uh, oscillator like driver cap you're taking out the oscillator tube and then you're just rewiring the input of the relay you're just bypassing the oscillator and you're just um, you know driving it the input of the uh, radio is you know driving the tubes directly so you're just bypassing the oscillator tube and number five you're um, basically uh, removing or bypassing one turn of the uh, output or the tank coil to convert it from um, 15 meters to 10 meters and some of them were set up for 20 meters and to do that you would uh, bypass or short out two turns of the coil but anyway let me put the camera down and um, we're gonna open this up we're gonna unplug so I can do it safely hopefully alrighty so that's what this one looks like on the inside and if you see that hole down there um, that's where the oscillator tube would have been you know if it had it if it was gonna be set up for a transmitter but I know nobody who actually used it you know for that purpose who wants a single channel CW only you know non modulated transmitter for something right so anyway um, tubes gone that's two output tubes that's the high voltage um, power supply stuff
transformer. Um, I think that stuff is the uh, relay. It's either the relay or the preamp. They kind of look similar. That terminal strip over there is for the uh, meter. The meter doesn't work on this one. It looks nice, but um, must be an open wire or coil or something. It just flops around and doesn't work, by the way. So we're going to turn her upside down. And we're not going to show the movement of the wires because basically the tube is gone and the wires are already moved. You're just basically taking the input and going, you know, when it keys down right to the tubes instead of going to the oscillator tube, which isn't there. But anyway, if you see the coil there, and even the instructions said, you know, bridge a, a solder across one gap of that coil. And if you can see here, that's the uh, solder gap that was, you know, bridged across. And by the way, I didn't do it, of course, you know, uh, these amps are, what, 50 years old, something like that. Somebody um, had already done all that. I had got, got it like this. And also the filament um, was bad in that transformer. So um, somebody put in a toroid there for the um, to dry the filaments. Filaments only and you know it's kind of crowded in there but it's a basic amp. That would be your tune cap, your load cap, your tank coil. It's got the little input trimmer right there that I'm moving with my finger and that's the uh, input coil. And just some pretty basic stuff in there. Grounded grid amplifier, so uh, not a lot of swing with these DNAs. You know, some people hate, let me put the camera down, some people hate CB amps. Talking about their garbage, but you know, DNA was made by two hams. Um, and it's basically, you know, the same as any other ham. Um, DNA grounded grid amplifier, you know, it's got a pi output, it got tuned input. Grounded grid, you know, pretty good power supply, nothing special, no bias, no swinging things, you know. Fairly clean amp. Only difference between these and what I say is the ham sweep tube amplifiers is, you know, these are made for four watt drive, and, you know, the bigger CB amps have driver tubes, and the ham amps don't because they, you know, take a hundred watt drive. And the CB amps have an automatic keying circuit where the um, ham amps have a, um, foot switch so anyway we gonna plug it in I guess that's enough talking on this one and hopefully if we uh, haven't moved too many things around we're on the trusty tram Titan 4 today one tube um, um, radio hall transistor one final tube kinda like a deck it seemed to drive this little amp better than the um, Mud Duck Midland radio did, um, which is kind of interesting to me. So we got it on standby. So while that's warming up, we're on a um, 20 watt scale, going into a dummy load with the uh, tram today, and I'm just dead keying a watt and a half, <whistles> swing about three and a half, and. Um, Audio, audio, about five, six, seven watts peak. Hello, hello, hello. So that's all we putting into it. So we gonna go to the 200 and take it off um, peak and put it on average and turn it on and uh, key it up. So instead of a watt and a half, we did key in 10. Audio, audio. And we're talking to about 20 you know instead of five so you know it's about times five what is going into it listen to about 25 talking to 20 mind you this is just a 50 watt amp and I'm not kicking it hard at all and um, last we gonna put it on peak audio 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 it's only doing 30 right now, but with me turning it upside down and all that, I must have um, um, moved something or, you know, turned a knob here or there or tweaked it a little bit because it'll do 50 peak. And that's all it do. Nice um, redo of the um, DNA Hornet. 2-2 amp. Meter don't work. 
but it looks pretty good. I'm going to put this one on the shelf and um, go to my next project, which I'm kind of leery of, to tell the truth. Um, that there, I guess it's my nice, clean, mint uh, Skipper 300. So I'm going to do a video on opening that up. It's like, man, couldn't put it in a much smaller box, could they? So that's it for this one. All right, bye.